welcome happy be with another reaction with the toxic couple uh with the video another time with andrew Tate. it's been a long time i didn't do any such videos i, I don't know if there is something news something new about them but i think they're going to preach the same preach that they do usually uh i we, i don't know anything about it i see just some clip on internet like usual you know andrew Tate is everywhere so like usual and it's been a long time I didn't check them, so I'd like to check them one more time also because this one is brand new. They did it uh, on uh, 14 February, so this one is just brand new, and it's on. Basically, it's in Romania in the house of Andrew Tate, but it's fresh and fit. You know, if you don't know the podcast, fre check uh, fresh and fit. They they make uh, they invite bunch of bunch of women, and they did they talk about they had a lot of conversation about uh, women men and stuff like this so if you if you're interested about this kind of things you can check them if you're not interested about this kind of things then no bother hours plus yeah to get to see from vegas you yes. worked hard bro we appreciate it yeah <laughs> for real first before we go make sure to check guys so guys before we go make sure to check the store i just added some cool design I'm going to post them on the picture. I added some really good design. I hope you're going to enjoy them. I hope I hope you're going to purchase something. It's really cool design from back and in the front. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. Just know this. I have other uh, suggestions are coming, guys. So let's enjoy. Vegas, uh, book arrest. It's been far too long since we've done a freshman. Yes, it's been a very long All time. these women are out of control again. <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> Running around, being haram. Talking about traditional values that they need. They sit down and say, you know what? I need a man who makes $100,000 a week. And I want a man with traditional values. And he's a masculine man who's going to take care of me. And he's gonna marry me, bro. You're a hoe, right? <laughs> it, it, bro, it blows my mind every time I watch your show. Traditional values—they went out the door when you spread your legs 55 times. What are they talking about traditional values for? So Andrew, Andrew, I am not trying to get put back in jail. I know when you're around these guys, you like to say outrageous things that some people consider misogynistic. I am not trying to get put back in jail. It's Valentine's Day. These sluts. For the love of God. These sluts. Is that a, is that a real These day? sluts, bro. <laughs> they all want to get married now. They're all trying to try the trad con route. No, I want to get married. I want to get married. You don't want to get married because you want to be a man's wife. You want to get married because you want to show off on Instagram. You want to publicly cuck the man. Put him in a position of servitude and slavery. Mm -hmm. You want him to get down on one knee and you want to get a photo of it and a big fat diamond. And you want to wear a dress and look pretty. I saw also a video the, the, the last time. And you put all I saw a video the last time. It was a, a woman dancing... Uh online in front of her man like she you know twer twerking and the man is like sitting up it was in the video is basically in christmas but i just saw it two days ago and she was twerking like online twerking basically and he was just in the back and laughing like oh, what the come on bro no man would like to see his wife twerking in front of a fucking billion no it, it, okay it's not the, the fault of the of the woman I don't say this is a vote of the woman, but at least he can say a word. Like, no, I don't like to see my woman like this. I don't want you to twerk in front of all, all these fucking random guys on the internet. You still can show her in a, in a good position. Like, when she, when she... You can have a conversation with her or making a funny video, but not, like, sexual things to put her in sexual things. I put the blame on the man. The man... Put him in a position of servitude and slavery. Mm -hmm. You want him to get down on one knee and you want to get a photo of it and a big fat diamond and you want to wear a dress and look pretty and you put it all over your Instagram and say to all the other hoes, look, look what I got my slave to do. My slave gave me all this shit. When some dude who had a bus pass, few years before a bus pass <laughs> and no hopes, managed to get in between your legs and take the fucking gold. For free. For free. So don't talk about being a wife or traditional values unless you live traditionally. I'm going to jail. You're, a, you're, you're going to jail. If you're a virgin, going to jail. if you're a virgin, <laughs> you can come at me with that stuff. Otherwise, 
Behave yourself. What else has been happening since I've done a fresh and fit? You still can't park. <laughs> <laughs> they're letting you. They're letting you fly planes. They're letting. Okay, basically, this one, uh, as a sarcastic thing, is a joke, and people don't get it. It's just a joke, uh, guys. Relax. If a comedian said it, it will be fine. But if he said it, it's not gonna be fine. Uh, relax, guys. It's just a fucking joke. Relax, guys. Don't take everything personal. It's just a joke. Enjoy for the love. I, if, if my wife is, was sitting here and she said, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. But it's a fucking joke. It's obviously it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> they're, letting you, they're letting you fly planes. They're letting you fly planes. That's a mistake. They should not let women fly planes because women panic under pressure. Anyone who thinks women can be a pilot, I have a simple test to you. Go get yourself a nice soft ball so they don't get hurt. We don't want to hurt anybody. And say, think fast and throw the ball at them and watch them panic. Do it at a man. He'll move. He'll dodge it. He'll catch it. Throw it at a chick. <gasps> let me ask you. If you're on a plane, it's turbulence. You're going through the sky. Things get rough. Lightning striking, etc. Plane starts getting out of control. Do you want your pilot to go... <gasps> No! <laughs> You're now in a desperate scenario where you must quickly and urgently become rich enough to buy your own plane, or a woman will fly you around. That's effectively suicide. What else has happened? They're Holy. saying WT, WT in the chat. Yo, let's go. Let saying, cook, OT baby. is back. Yo, OT is back. OT is back. OT let's is fucking go, Andrew. Let's fucking go. Let's 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 go. let us go I thought we were gonna break down the Putin interview. Nah. What the fuck, Andrew? Putin's tired of the West. <laughs> Putin's had enough of our shit. He's like, I don't even want to talk to Tucker. I don't even want to fix America. I don't want to tell the conservatives what they already know. I'm just gonna say, ask your leaders. I don't care. America's a failed society. It's failing in real time. And I haven't been there for a while because I've been a bit busy. But you guys can tell me what am I? But you know. Uh, if we speak about Putin, Putin already won. Like, why he need to speak about the American and the West? And why would he speak? They already fucked up, fucked up things in their brain. Is going on in America? It's like a lot of things, a lot of crazy things is going on. I don't know what the fuck how to explain in all this. I don't know how to say it. But there is a lot of garbage in their mind. They already brainwashed and already believe in things. They already believe in things that. They, 10 years ago was a, a mental illness if you believe in this kind of things they already believe in them anyway so what's the point Russia is already winning because the other one is I'm missing in Miami are the girls better or worse my friend I must report to you it has gotten worse and actually speaking does it get any better no I need to fuck a cigar too but I do think that like uh, on some level what the fuck? We want you guys back in Miami, though. Enjoy it before we go to jail. When you can, of yeah, course. Yeah, I'll enjoy it. Uh, I'm about to go to jail with y'all. Best podcast. Yo, yo, let's fucking go, boys. <laughs> Shooting the shit. We're back in Romania, bro. What's fucking good? Rumble yo, Andrew, question for you, bro. So you mentioned traditional women. Yeah. Where do you find them nowadays? Where do you find these women, bro? You have to find this is the thing, bro. I'm getting so much trouble. On a level of one to ten, how much trouble do you want me to get? Zero! Oh, zero. zero, bro. Zero. zero. We don't want zero. you to go back to jail, bro. Zero. I ain't scared of jail. Go for it. Nah. Here's the problem <laughs> with these girls obsessed with traditional masculinity or traditional roles, even though it's all a scam and it's a good joke. Because they're starting to realize women catch on slow, but they're starting to realize being a hoe really ain't that cool. You know so now they're going to come along and say, oh, I don't want to be a hoe. I want traditional values, etc. And one of two things happens. Firstly, you find a traditional woman because you have to make a traditional woman. You can't find a woman. You have to make a woman. You have to no. teach her and guide her. She has to learn from you. She has to grow from you. I would so you disagree need to find on a woman this. Early enough in her career path of running around dating men before her to do anything detrimental to her psyche where she cannot absorb the lessons which you want to preach upon her. Therefore, you need to meet a woman without that much experience, which means she has to be relatively young. You're not going to meet a four-year-old woman who ain't been on her back. Another time, Andrew, Andrew is describing the West. He's not describing the Muslim country. He's describing the West because the traditional women in a Muslim country are still traditional women. It's New days is getting fucked up. Why? Because they are why it's getting fucked up, especially in my country, for example, in Algeria, especially it's, it's going to be it, it's going too much craziness there. Why? Because they are following the West. They believe in the same uh, same things as, as the West are believing. You know what I mean? Like 
a woman could have a relationship before marriage who can who, who and, ha- and can have sex before marriage and stuff like this you know what i mean so they start following the west and but that's wrong we're not we're muslim we don't do these kind of things we are muslim we should you should be uh, like in another way conservative you know what i mean but uh, know that if she do something like this, she gonna offend the whole, f- not offend the whole family, but she gonna bring some stuff not good uh, about the family name, you know. And is that things change, and they trying to follow the West, and that's why we, if you're preaching about everybody now, I think it's it's right for the, this world is going just crazy, you know, in uh, these days. But uh, to find a, to build a traditional woman is impossible. You you need just to find a traditional woman, and there is traditional woman. Trust me. Experience means she has to be relatively young. You're not going to be a four year old woman who ain't been on her back. So you need to find a younger one. Now I'm not saying young. I'm saying younger, 23, 24, etc. That's the first thing. The second thing, I actually think I'll come up with a theory recently. I think most women end up being hoes because they're obsessed with the idea of monogamy from a high-level male, and it destroys their mind and life by extension. Because when they get a man who could take care of them, who knows how to make money, who knows how to educate them, who can guide them, protect them, provide for them, be a good man to them, they're with him. The second he fucks something else, they leave. Because they're told men aren't supposed to cheat. This is terrible. And then they go and try and find another guy. And they go through the cycle again. And he (laughs) cheats. And they leave. And after they've been through it six or seven times, by then they're stone cold ruthless sluts. Because their pussy's been used too much. And that's what happens. When you've been through enough dick, you're like, well, I'll just go get a new dick. I'll just go get a new dick. And before you know it, constantly chasing monogamy has these girls on a carousel of cock. They need to give all that up. Find a real man who could take care of you, who you love very much, and when he cheats, just say to him, I love you very much, good job, baby, here's a coffee. Done. And then you can stop being a hoe. So I actually think a lot of women don't, I mean, America's a particularly failed to, Tristan, what's the problem? <laughs> going to jail, bro. You're going to jail. <laughs> I thought you changed. <laughs> what the hell? I'm sorry, my is back. What you got? Tay is back. Whoa. Oh, you fucking faggot sucking shit about Andrew. Andrew's just boring. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I'm... We're here, <laughs> motherfuckers. What's the matter, Tristan? <laughs> But, but I actually think, okay, let's go. America's a failed society where a lot of them try and be 304s and only fan girls and hoes, etc. But there's a lot of girls who end up just sleeping with two. Yeah, I would like to speak about this one. Uh, you know, OnlyFans is so easy, you know, guys. It's really so easy. I could also go to OnlyFans, you know. I don't mind receiving a lot of critics, guys. I don't mind. This is part of what I'm doing right now. I, there is a lot of critics, but I cannot, uh, like, uh, in my expression in an Algerian, in my expression of an Algerian, we say we cannot, we cannot throw every dog a bone. You just need to keep moving. So when I receive criti- when I receive feedbacks, I respond respectfully. When I receive critics and critics, but not respectfully, I just don't give an f for for it, guys. So fuck off. That's all I'm saying. If you want really to speak about your feedback, please try to say it respectfully and I will respond to you and we go, no matter what is your thoughts or your mind in it, we go to it and we and we talk about it in the comment because I read all the comment, guys. I literally read all the comment because some of you really give me some good f- feedbacks about it, guys. Really. Try and be 304s and only yeah. girls and hoes. And as I said, I almost forget it. And then I said, an OnlyFans is so easy for everybody. Everybody can do an OnlyFans. You just open an account and you start posting, like, a, uh, make a publish things like, oh, I'm an OnlyFans. Like, we see everything. And do it, find a girl and do this shit with her and shit like this. It's really easy, but it's the same, it's the same thing as Haram. So I am here in YouTube and I'm doing the things I'm supposed to do in YouTube and I'm. When I when I do, for example, I did the last time Putin. I, a lot of you didn't like it, but I don't give an F for it, guys, because I just say what I feel. That's all I'm saying. Oh, etc. But there's a lot of girls who end up just sleeping with too many.
Yeah. Men, men, because they're obsessed with masculine monogamy. They need to get the idea out of your mind. Women, get out of your head. You're going to get cheated on by the big G. You're going to get cheated on by the guy at KFC. He can be the first man who's ever fried chicken in Kentucky. He can be the last man who's ever fried chicken in Kentucky. One of them's rich. One of them's poor. Both are fucking. So you need to get over it. Get over it. Make your man a sandwich and be good. Andrew, are you... And then you can stop fucking running around sucking dick. Are you... That's what's going to happen. Bro, if a girl were to leave me, the top G, because I slept with someone else, she's going to end up with who? With who? Some G. Some shit. G. Some shit replacement. And then when he does it, but she's going to to some other guy. Heartbroken and forever alpha widowed into eternity. Her pussy's still mine. It's still laying in my bed. I haven't seen her in years. Her soul's still in my bedroom. She, no one can take it. No one's ever getting it back. I'll go to jail. Tristan, we're going to jail. I'll go to jail. Again? Her soul and pussy's still in my bed. And some dudes out there are like, oh, baby, I love you. Why are you mad all the time? You know what? Maybe if I marry you and show you I'm a real man and I'll cuck myself to you publicly on your Instagram page because I'm mature and I've grown up and I'm a real man and all those guys are running around with all those pretty girls who have low body counts, they're immature. I'm mature and I'm not, I'm not threatened by your past. I'm not insecure. Marry me, please. And he'll get down on one knee and beg. Beg like a pussy. Bro, I will kneel before God alone. You can put a gun in my face and say, I'm going to shoot you in the head if you don't kneel down. I say, you better fucking shoot me. I ain't kneeling to some chick because I've, I've heard her version of her history and I only believe 10% of her story. You think I get down on one fucking knee and beg? Oh, Look please marry Tristan. me. I've only been paying your bills for the last two years. What the fuck? <laughs> begging. Bro, she should be begging me to keep paying for her shit. Fact. I am fuming. That my brother here refuses to be misogynistic enough to put us back in jail. Andrew. <laughs> or I'm down. I'm turning it up. I'm turning it on. Let's go. I am ready. Tristan, Andrew, yesterday was Valentine's Day. Well, it's still Valentine's Day. Well, but, yeah, it's still because Valentine's remember, Day. It's, it's still in America. So for the guys watching, what you get? You get your girl for a gift. For, well, for I'll, tell, I'll tell you what I gave my girl. What'd you get her? I sent her a link to this podcast. <laughs> Watch me live. So, yo. baby, I know you're watching. Oh, God. Enjoy yo. this show. Yo, yo you guys want to hear a funny story? Literally, right before did, this, we had dinner. So, <laughs> Tristan's there with one of his girls, right? And it, she's, she's, she's like, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, guys. This is just fucking crazy to me. We're supposed to talk about Russia and Putin, and these niggas just threw, did this shit out of nowhere. Let's talk about Russia. I don't know what the going on. Let's talk about Russia. So, you think, think Putin we'll... takes shit from ours? <laughs> <laughs> no. You think Putin's putting up with any of their shit? You go to Putin and say, you better get on Yo. one knee and beg for me. How much money do you make? He's Putin, bro. Yo, not at all. Built so, different. So I'm like, oh, nice to meet you. Where are you from? She goes, uh, she goes to Ukraine, and uh, Tristan's like, oh, you mean Russia? <laughs> <laughs> I do say that to Ukraine. I do say that to Ukraine. I do Yo. Say, Yo. I was like, yeah, you, yeah, well, you Western Russia, okay. Yeah. And she's like, no, Ukraine. She's like, no, you mean Russia? Or oh, Western Russia? <laughs> Take it <laughs> over. I do do that. I do say that. I've been known to say that to Ukraine. And okay. then he said, okay, your Valentine's gift is you're going to watch, you're going to watch, you're going to drink wine by yourself and watch me on this podcast. <laughs> He's Listen. not kidding. When he said, he sent to the lead. I've always dreamed of a traditional family, they say. I've always wanted to be raised in a man and a woman in the house and we have the kids. I've always dreamed of a traditional family. You dream of it now, you're 20 fucking nine. You didn't when you were 18. Too late. You were partying. Where are you fucking running around the boats with your tits out? Oh, now, oh, now you're 29. You're dreaming of a traditional family. Who's paying for it? Me. Bruh. <laughs> yep. Bro, you think I'm fucking stupid? They think I'm dumb. I'm top G. I'm on the internet telling you I'm on to you, hoes. I'm on to your whole game. I know the whole scam. I'm famous on the whole world for knowing this shit. You're still going to try it with me? Bro, make me a sandwich. We have uh, some chats here from Rumble. Yo, fucking crazy. Leopard Bruin says, uh, this is awesome. can't say his name. Never take a shit from women that are involuntarily single. In sinks, okay? Uh, we have here as well, uh, let's see. Bunch of these hey guys, guys, we're gonna read only 100 and up with Rumble Ranch just because we got a lot to cover. Um, um, <clears throat> 98 says, We love you, Ninjas. Legends, we're back. Shout we'll read 98. the ones that came up before I made the announcement. We got yeah, y'all. Yeah. Um, what, what's next? Okay, but you guys are waiting almost two years for this. 
Yeah, it's been a long been a time. A long time. You guys were wearing a very We're going to do another panel shirt. show. I got to come to Miami. Yeah. We're going to get some hoes. I got to do, because everyone copies my moves. You know when I gave my phone to the chick and now everyone tries to do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I slept with that one there. Can't remember her name. Slept with her after the podcast. Took her back. <laughs> all these all this, all this, these moves and everyone's like, oh, I want to do it. Because I did it first. I'm the fucking originator. I need to go there, get them all there. Taekwon Ho. <laughs> back to the original. We need some bruv. Remember, she was like, because uh, I, I remember that one. The girl was like, oh, yeah, I can fight guys off. And you were like, what do you do? She's like, Taekwondo, you mean twi- Taekwondo. Taekwondo Ho. Taekwondo Ho. <laughs> Legendary. <laughs> and then that dude turned up, tried to be all weird, and all the girls got scared, ran away. Yeah, I remember that. I, remember camera, the way, I watched that. Yo, it, it's, oh. it's, uh, it's amazing, bro. How oh, So the girls are still that bad? None of them learned any lesson? Still Worse, man. Dude, they come on the Worse. podcast, they cap, and then they go back home to their regular lives. Uh, it's short time says, let's go. WFNF, w, Mr. Producer, W, the, the talisman, fire emoji, shout out to you. Uh, Soto J says, this question is for y'all of what you would do if your girl, if your, um, that you love is a good wife. The definition of a good woman you talk to all about, what would you do if she couldn't have any kids? So if he's a good girl to you. Oh, good girl, but she couldn't have yeah, kids? Yeah, couldn't have any a, kids. That's a good question, and it's super unfortunate. I'll yeah. let you guys answer what you would do. Um, we'd have a talk, and I'd just tell her, listen, you know, I want kids, and if you can't do it, you know, what's the other solution? There's just going to be somebody else has to get pregnant. So Yeah, she'd be a main girl that can't have kids. Yeah, take care of I'd get another one. Pretty what much. do you think, Tristan? Yeah, you can't call off your entire genetic bloodline. For the last 250,000 years, there have been people killing saber-toothed tigers and conquering empires and fighting in armies and marrying their wives and plowing fields to finally, finally have you. So yeah, you do need to procreate. And if she's a really good girl, keep her around. Keep her around, but you do need to procreate Speak- at some point somehow. Yeah. Speaking of genetic bloodline, and I don't want to say anything too controversial. Oh my God. This is, I sound, it feels to me like he's about to say the most controversial thing he's said so far. That's what it feels like. This feels good, man, to be the back. The majority of men. We're fucking back. The majority, we're back. <laughs> we're fucking back. We never left. Go, <laughs> going to jail. <laughs> the majority of men cut off their genetic bloodline anyway because they're scared of some woman moaning at them. Now, let me let me say something that to the world that everyone needs to understand. Men, in general, we're pretty quick, we're pretty efficient, right? Mm. We like to get things done. We don't like to sit around, mess around, mope about. We have to get it done. Boom, 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 boom. Women take nine months to grow a single baby. If men could grow babies, it'd be like, Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna take nine months to grow a baby. No. Then you need months to recover, and then you Okay, you just. I will. I will speak. Uh, describe this. What I mean. Say here exactly. It's for. He's saying it as in a funny way. He doesn't mean it. You know, it's, it's still sarcastic. And people take this kind of word and put it in and out of context, and they say like, "What the fuck is wrong with this guy?" And saying this, we all know that's this fucking garbage, and this, that's how we, how we were created, and that's how Allah created us. So it's just for funny things, just for the for the for the viewers to to have something. He say this kind of things for the, the viewer to take it as a TikTok and launch it like this and like this, and that's how you click the bait. You know, that's how people click in it because look what he said. It, it's absolutely funny and sarcastic and make no sense uh, out of it. But it's just because of the so uh, the people are gonna hear this, they are gonna click. Even if they hate him, they are gonna click more. You know, the hater click more. The like just so watch it one time and move. But the hater click, they dig in your past. You're gonna tell me I'm gonna get my dynasty of 25 sons from just you somehow. Damn. No, it's not gonna happen. So, and every man out here knows I'm right. You want 25 sons, especially if you're rich. If you can afford it. If you can't afford it, maybe kids are stressful to you because there's some guys like, oh man. Well, I've been saying this. Uh, I've been saying this too. When I was since I was a kid, I dreamed to have a kids. Like um, since I was 19 years old, I dreamed to have um, a, a kids. Like. But it depends, as he said, it, it depends on the money level. It depends how much can I take care of the family. So if I can, can take care of the family really good and I, am, uh, I, I have a certain amount of like a big a certain amount of money, then I will have like my grandpa 19. I don't give a fuck. I have 19. If I can take care of them, I will have 19. If not, then I'll probably 8, 9.
kids are stressed. That's because you're a broke, you're a dummy. If you have loads of money like me, kids are easy. Boom, kid, bang, nanny does something. Yell at them when they mess up, make a mistake. Boom, easy. Being a father is easy when you're rich. So you want 25 sons, right? And you're gonna need multiple women to get that done. And most men with money know this, but they're like, oh yeah, I've had my kids and my wife will, your, your wife will what? Your wife is deciding your genetic legacy. They are, your wife crying and her feelings and her complaining is more important than your genetic legacy into the endless fabric of time. You need to sit down and say, listen, I love you with all my heart. You're just too slow. <laughs> Shout, shout out to Elon Musk, world's richest man. He's got like 10 I love 40 you. for women. I wish shout. they were I wish they were all from you, but you're fucking around, tippy toeing, hokey pokey. I gotta get stuff done. So don't be sad. She, yes, yes, you're at worst enemies pregnant again. Yeah, but we have numbers to reach. We've got targets. Sales, we've got targets. Targets, bro. We've got I targets see. to reach. Are you gonna let a woman and her crying? <laughs> no, don't do that. No, stay with me. Oh, bro. Andrew. Oh, Let's fucking Tell go, her, baby. You're bro. a real bad man. <laughs> real <laughs> bad man. Bro, you gotta get it done. You gotta get it done. Now, there's a woman out there who comes to me and says, I can make babies in two weeks. I don't play games. I'll be like, oh, cool. Boom. Done. <laughs> done. But <laughs> until, those, until then, I need a lot of ovens to bake the bread. Okay, next is the family circle Let's says, I'm Tom Likas' nephew, and I think this show is awesome. Oh, his nephew's talk, uh, talk, talking to us. Tom Likas' nephew. Hey. Tell him. Tell him we want him on the pod, man. Yeah, tell yo, we need Tom Likas on the podcast, tell your uncle man. That we need we need him on the pod, man. He's a legend, bro. He's a legend, legend. Bro. Uh, Tell him now, right now. We have up next as well. Uh, some more here. Oh, let's see. It's a bunch of these right now. We have uh, Kate Juicer says, "Keep it up, fellas." R.I.P. to slave mind. Well said, bro. Yeah, yeah. R.I.P. to slave mind. Well, people say that. You know what? People always say that. R.I.P. the slave mind. And I don't know who this person is, and I'm hoping that he means every word he typed. Cake juicer. But people say R.I.P. the slave mind, but do they mean the words they speak from their mouth because they say R.I.P. the slave mind, and I guarantee it sometime in the next 72 hours he's going to have Pornhub open jerking his little fucking penis like a dickhead. I, I, I just feel like I've, I've reached this echelon of maximum efficiency in world conquest. And people always come up to me and go, yeah, I'm like you, I work like you. And I look at them and go, no, you fucking don't. No, that stop. is a lie. No, stop. no, you don't. If you truly did, I'd be able to see it on you. I'd be able to sense it on you in the way you move. There'd be no reason you're still broke five years later. Five fucking years. Five whole years. Damn. You're as bad as the women growing babies. <laughs> I don't, I, I just, I, when I hear it now, part of me is like good. And part of me is like, are you lying to me? I kind of get aggressive, kind of mad. When people come up to me and go, I'm going to escape the Matrix. I kind of look at them and go, you fucking lying. I'm smashing them. They don't lie well, to me. I don't well, he's not lying to you. He's lying to himself. If he say it and he doesn't mean it, he's lying to himself. And he's, he's, he, it means his brain is fucked up. He's lying to himself. He's lying. He's lying. For example, Andrew, he have really fair point and he's preaching something really nice. But in the same time, he's, in the same time he, he's still his opinion. You know, and you need to... Grow your opinion. You need to make your opinion count also. So how you can do that? He reached a point that he make his opinion really count. He's in status that my opinion is a G. But you also need to make your opinion. Like if you saying what you mean, then it's good. But if you don't say what you mean, then you're fucking lying to yourself. You don't lie to him. He doesn't give a fuck about you. You need to make, you need, like he said, you need to make the world and try to get much as far from the fucking porn home. I don't even know you. Don't lie to me. <laughs> I hope you meant every word you said, because as a man, your word needs to mean something. We block they it used too to much, say your guys. word is all you have, yeah. and it's absolutely true, especially to yourself. If you say something out loud, you have to mean what you say to yourself. When they come and put me and my brother back in jail because my brother can't shut up and keep saying misogynistic things on podcasts, <laughs> when they do that to us, I'll say out loud, I like jail. And that's it, done. I like jail now. This is great. I can chill. Got cockroaches. Everything's fine. Oh my god! I'm having a great time. But oh my god, bro! If my word, the only reason my word to myself is iron is because I don't waste it. So if you said resist the slave mind, escape the slave mind, good. I hope you mean what you said. I hope you watch every fish and fresh and fit. I hope you watch emergency meetings. I hope you're in the war room. I hope you join Hustle University. I hope you're in my own's group. I hope you're working all the time. Hope you don't jerk off all day. Hope you ain't putting up with shit. From that bitch who didn't give shit to the dude who was fucking her before you, I hope you're behaving yourself. Don't be fucking lying. Because if we catch you slipping, it's your ass. Shadow realm.
To the shadow, shadow realm. realm. I'll banish you to the shadow realm. The darkness. You don't want to be banished to the shadow realm by me. Trust Fresh me. banish Trust me to the shadow realm. Yeah, man, you can't, you can't see me at all. Uh, Arab <laughs> Uncut says, my favorite faggots. Okay, thanks, okay, man. Okay, we're on Rumble, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah we can well, say this. Okay. Yeah, well, that, 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 that sounds like more of a reflection on you, you. and how, how you see watching panel shows with four dudes uh, than what we're actually doing. I feel like you're holding up the mirror here, bro. And, you know, I'm just see, I'm seeing rainbows. We might so. not make it out of Romania. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we might not make I, yo, okay. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I came in, we had a chat about some certain things. I'm like, all right, cool, yeah, this is gonna be off the pod. We're just chatting, whatever. And like, we're gonna have a chill pod, right, with the guys, talk some shit, you know, talk about, you know, some stuff. And then Andrew just comes out of nowhere. I'm like, what the fuck? Guns like, blazing, bro. Right, don't worry, I got everything hooked up. I got the cigarette plug. <laughs> I got people to clean our rooms for hey, us. Man. I got the roach killers. I'm good, man. Fuck it, bro. Uh, bro I, can get, I can get extra hey, pillows. Let's do it. I've got it all set up. I'll go to jail with y'all. You know, I'll go to jail with y'all, man. Oh, to my boy. What? <laughs> Send to the hey. rest, room five. I'll go to jail with y'all, man. I, I'm black, bro. <laughs> the women don't want to be in jail. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be we're, fine. We're all black here, actually. Never mind. Let's, get, let's go see Mustafa. What the hell? Tell him the story about Mustafa. Yeah! yeah. 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 Yo, tell him the story about Mustafa. <laughs> you want to tell him? The... Yeah, you can tell it. No, oh, man. Uh, so, Mustafa was a guy who we went to jail with. So, half Turkish, half Romania. He thought he was absolutely hilarious. He became the hero of everybody in jail. So, we don't look out the window at this dude, Mustafa. When you were like, oh, the tits are probably having a bad time, I feel so bad for him. Myron, come on, you should have known better. There was this guy, Mustafa. He was the entertainment for the entire jail. Imagine. Like a coliseum, watching a warrior at work. All the prison windows, you could see this guy's cell. And what you do is, when the whole jail starts chanting, Mustafa, Mustafa, is he'd start smashing his room up and taking anything he could and throwing it out the window. So the first few days I saw him do this, he was ripping up his mattress, throwing the feathers from his pillow out, throwing his bar of soap out, and everyone would cheer every time he got something out the, out the window. He ended up breaking the glass to his window. It's February, it's minus 10. Mustafa's cold as fuck, no blanket, sleeping on a concrete floor, but then the cheering would start again, the chanting would start. Mustafa, Mustafa, Mustafa. And then, out of nowhere, He'd be, you just hear these noises, this banging. The guards would be like, oh, we're not going to go beat him up now. He's got nothing left in his room. And he'd be kicking the wall, trying to break off bits of tile, peel off bits of metal from the bed frame. And every time he threw something out the window, the jail would erupt. Yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, I like Mustafa. Every time I saw him, I'm passing him in the hallways. He ain't got no cigarettes. He's broke. I'm the rich guy in jail. I'm the cigarette boss. Yeah. The cigarette dawn of jail. So I hand him some cigarettes every time I see him. So then Mustafa had the bright idea of going into various cells where he had beef with people who didn't like his bullshit, smashing up their cell, and telling everyone, I'm with the Tate brothers now. <laughs> I'm with the Tate brothers now. You see how big they are? Don't fuck with me. But he's in his cell with these people. Oh, shit. I'm on a different cell on a different floor. Yeah. I can't back him up. Yeah. Not that I would. Yeah. And I heard he got his ass whooped about eight or nine times throwing my name around jail. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> the Marlboro Ma Maverick. Yeah, Mustafa's yeah. a legend. And, and you thought I was having a bad time? <laughs> Yeah, we're ready. We're ready to go back. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. So so you said, that, so the story was he basically threw everything out of his room, right? Yeah. On the last day. He broke his window. He broke his window, threw everything out. And then you guys call him Mustafa, Mustafa. So he's like trying to find something. He's kicking the door or whatever. <laughs> and then what did he find? A piece of brick, a piece of tile. A piece of rock, this big. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> anything he could anything. just break in the Throws it out the window and everyone goes crazy. Like, yeah, Mustafa, <laughs> yeah, you're Never give up, baby. Let me get from that. Never give up. You know the oh. thing? It was actually, honestly, grade A entertainment. I mean, <laughs> outside here in the free world, I mean, there are good things like Fresh and Fit, emergency meetings, but yeah. when you're locked in that jail cell, that's as good as any EM, any yeah. Fresh and Fit podcast. <laughs> yeah. They'll keep you locked on that window for hours on end. And then, and Bro, then eventually right. that rock comes out oh, and everyone no. goes crazy. Exactly. Because they, they know he didn't have shit. No, nothing. There you go. See, sometimes as a man, when you're under pressure, you got to perform. you got to do the impossible. You've already thrown everything out of your room. Everybody's going to cheer your name. You get to be a gladiator or a hero if you manage to pull it off. You've destroyed all the glass, destroyed your TV, destroyed your bed, your pillow, mattress. Everything's gone. You can barely sleep. You're on a concrete floor. It's minus 10. But people are shouting your name. You need to perform. So you're going to punch a wall, damage your hands at a point you can get a small piece of brick the size of a pea. And you're going to throw it out the window so that you, everyone thinks you're a hero again for 15 seconds. Either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Gladiator. Legend. And you know, I wanted that, the, the people to hear that story because even though it's like hilarious, it goes to show the Take power of resilience. Take me to jail, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Legend. Legend in here as well, man. Jump in. Um, can we get him a mic? 
I could yeah, plug. Yeah, yeah. Share, share that one. Okay, we, we I could plug them up. I mean, too, if needed. Nah, we're good. We're good. Um, so yeah, dude, fucking. Uh, <laughs> so the 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 more of that story, why I wanted you guys to hear that story was, literally, and he was getting his ass whooped every time he did this, guys. Yeah, yeah. He would get his ass whooped, but he still found a way. Got it done because he understood. Yo, I gotta perform. I gotta make this shit happen. Wait, and there's he made no it way. Th sorry, there's no way. Tens of thousands, probably millions of people are gonna watch this, and his jail <laughs> antics are now become a worldwide sensation. You see, <laughs> you see, the guards doubted him. Yeah. People doubted him. The females at the prison on the opposite block who laughed at him doubted this man, and he is now world famous. His, his struggle and his perseverance in his in his time of hardship are now echoed. To every corner of the world, everybody who wants his fresh and fit, everybody who wants his emergency being now knows the name Mustafa. I think he actually has been sentenced to like seven years. All 30k of you. In Bro, seven, in seven when years, he gets out in seven years, he'll have a great podcast. Yeah, yeah. great. We'll have, you on the, we'll have you on the pod, Mustafa. Him, and he to you, bro. Him overcoming the adversity and punching the fucking wall, right? Breaking his hand right. well, and getting his ass whooped after the fact. Literally got him mentioned on a podcast for not giving up. That's crazy, He shows you, bro. Never give up. Never give up, guys. Ever. Funny how the universe works. So, so for those fresh and fit viewers who do not know this man right here, this man right here is named Marcel Mullings. He's a very old friend of mine. I've known this guy for about what twenty years or something. Twenty plus. Yeah, he's uh he's now streaming on Rumble. At the end of this show, you'll tell him where to find your channels, etc., 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 etc. But um. So tell us all why the bitches are out of control. Why are the bitches out of control, Marcel? Well, oh, what? Whoa! Whoa! You're on the wrong motherfucking podcast, Marcel. Come on, bro. Let me tell you why. They're all delusional. That's the <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Fuck for the Valentine's Day, bitch. Oh, it's true. It's true. The delusion is crazy as well. They just they they see this this fantasy life online and they think that it's real. They try to push it onto other people and just it just doesn't work. You know, it's I'm true. gonna say something very controversial that you four might get mad at me for. I don't think these bitches are out of control. Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. Right? No, no, no. Let me finish. On esteemed podcasts like Fresh Fit, I know you only invite the finest of ladies onto your podcast. Of course, of course. Of course only the, the best. The, the classiest of ladies. The best of the best. But you know, the problem is, I don't think there's anything wrong with any of these women. Let me tell you why. Because I've got, how many cars do we have, Andrew? 59. 59 cars. Well, so, we brought the brand new Vantage, 60. Okay. 60 cars. So today I was driving the God. BMW X6. It's got five seats. It ain't the fastest. I had to take everyone out to dinner. It had its use case. You almost right? killed me, man. What do you mean? Yeah, it wasn't well, fast. Well, I mean, <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Well, it's still a $200,000 car. It's the yeah, slowest bro. shit I got, Myron. Come on, give me a break. But hear me out. You almost nothing, killed me. There's nothing wrong with these women. Because let me tell you, as a man, as a connoisseur, an ex-connoisseur of women, I've now grown up. Obviously, my girlfriend's probably watching this stream. But I've grown up. But back in my <laughs> <laughs> back in my womanizing days, right, I was known to date one or two women. I was known to do this, right? And when everyone's like, oh, these girls trash, she just wants to hang out with the millionaire on his boat and suck his dick. Let me tell you something. Sometimes when you're the millionaire and you're on your boat, you need someone to suck your dick. <laughs> no question that. Now, the, the problem is when you try to use the wrong uh, tool for the wrong job. So if I said, you know... You know what they like about this kind of conversation, Fresh and Feet, when Andrew and uh, Tristan all gather, on a, all gather together? It's like you and your friend gathering in a back in a, in a car. You one of you guys driving, and you have no camera, nothing at all, and you have exactly this kind of conversation, but with no camera. You know what I mean? But this one take it on online, so everyone gonna watch it. But you, I believe every man with his friend talk about this, talk about all the, what they are saying, but no camera. You know what I mean? So. No, I'm gonna take you all to the restaurant. Let's jump in the Ferrari. It wouldn't work and you'd be like this is uncomfortable This is bullshit. This simply isn't working So when you take the girl who wants to be on the millionaire's boat and suck the millionaire's dick and you try to wipe her up You've made a problem, but there are wives out there. The issue is people seeing the Boat dick hoe and trying to make her the wife and then people like you even are guilty of this on your podcast You're like you know, girls, you need to be like this if you're ever going to find a good man. It's too late for them. <laughs> There's no saving them, Myron. The I'm wives, trying, man. The wives are out there, and they're probably, no offense, not responding to your request. To <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're just not. So nothing's wrong with anyone because everyone's got their use case. Yo. I'm telling you, I've been known to sit on boats and get my dick sucked. And I didn't marry any of them, and I had a wonderful fucking weekend. So what's wrong? Nothing. There, there is a valid point that. <laughs> we're going yeah, to jail. No, we're going to jail. No. There's a, there's a valid point. <laughs> wow. Let me, let me, let me try and save us from jail now by removing the gender from the argument. Uh, jail, uh, jail, jail, 
Jail. Jail. As, well, as a man, you have friends for business and friends that you come to who you need advice and friends you rely on in a fight. And then maybe you have a friend that you hang around with just because they're an idiot and you get drunk sometimes and you have a friend for X and a friend for Y and a friend for Z, etc. As a man, if you have your game right and you're not the kind of emotional idiot who gives his heart away to anyone who'll touch his little pee-pee, because that's what happens with these guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. They meet a hoe and it's like, she touched my pee-pee. I love her. She's the one. Mm, like an idiot. Right, so what you have to do is just keep everyone firmly in their lane. Keep the wives as wives, keep the hoes as hoes, enjoy them for what they are, and 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 enjoy the tapestry of life. Let you don't want all the girls to be hoes. And truthfully, truthfully, for all the red pill traditional men out there, you don't want all the girls to be wives either, sir. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't lie to me. You don't want Don't lie to me. You don't want none of the girls to be hoes. <laughs> I'm looking Not at you one. all. What, zero. Oh, hey, man. No, sorry. Zero. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm the holes, you bro. don't want none of them to be right. hoes. <laughs> So you I don't want, want that. I love the holes, bro. So you keep them in the right. Just saying. If you keep them in the right place, you can't go wrong. Yeah. So okay. whose fault is it actually? The man's fault. It's the man's fault because he gets emotional when they touch his little pee pee. Exactly. That's what That's happens. Men ain't men now, though. Exactly. That's the sure. problem. And they have full-on emotional breakdowns, and they end up pouring their heart out to some random bitch. And she's like, well, I, I didn't want this. I just want... I, I, you should regret what happened like I do. Why are you telling me you love me? It's disgusting. It's vile. And then they just flutter with money, and they manage to keep her around because her bills need paying. Then they get down on one knee and end up cucked out and... Bro, fighting Dylan Dennis and all this sorts of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, enjoy that, was, that was crazy. Guys. Like, that's a perfect example yeah. of, like... When your girl does stupid shit, how it can come back to literally haunt you. She made the dude. Did, oh, we're we gonna talk about this. Hey, yeah. man. Wait, like, isn't it our best friend though? Let me. Okay. Let me. Let, let's. <laughs> because I'm gonna try and segue because I'm trying to avoid internet beefs, bro. I want to. I want to say something. Mm. About who? My life is hard. About who? Sorry. That we need to do it again. About who exactly I spoke? That was crazy. Guys. Like that's a perfect example yeah. of like. When your girl does stupid shit, how it can come back to literally haunt you. She made the dude. Did, oh, we're we gonna talk about this. Yeah. Hey, man. Wait, well, isn't that our best friend, though? Let me, okay, let me, let, let's, <laughs> because I'm gonna try and segue because I'm trying to avoid internet beefs. Bro, I wanna, I wanna say something. Mm. My life is hard. I got government one after me, I got government two after me, government three after me. They're trying to put me in jail, I gotta go to court, I'm on bail, I gotta pay the bills, baby mama's crying. Oh, David, why do you only give me a hundred grand this month? Bro, I, don't, I don't need internet beef. I don't need it. So I'm just trying to behave, but... I'll let you carry on, carry on. Yeah, I know. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, just like, bro, I just gotta keep it a million. Like, yo, that is a perfect example of a girl tarnishing everything you worked for Offer her doing some dumb shit 10 years ago. The thing is about women is as misogynistic as people pretend I am, because I'm not a misogynist. I actually love women so much that I want to guide them towards the light so they understand themselves better so they don't make these mistakes. That I'm is a true. nice guy. That's true. That's why all these women send me love letters. But the truth is... How can a guide, how can a man guide all women? Uh, well, it's nice what you're doing, like preaching and trying to give message that uh, a lot of men things and a lot of women things but they couldn't say it but at the same time if they want guidance they they, they go to god that's what his guidance is repel to god that's how it is it, it, I'm, uh, it's not to follow human beings if you want to follow follow god go a religious be a religious man or be a religious woman and you're going to have your life in order that's discipline. This is a man. If you have a good woman, a good woman can be the best thing about your life and your greatest source of strength. And if you have a bad woman, she'll fuck your head up and yep. fuck your life up and but fuck your reputation up on every level. A woman can make or break a man's life. Same job, same house, same car, same dog, same sofa, same bed. Different bitch. Different reality. Yeah. Bro, different reality. And even worse, you'll notice this the most when you have a girl who flips, who was cool. And now she ain't. And you're like, ah, everything was good. Now you're upset. What? Over what? And you'll see. But a woman can make or break a man's life. That's why it's so important you make the correct decisions and you don't end up taking the wrong woman from the wrong background, trying to put a, a triangle in the square circle. You remember when you were a kid and you had that little ball? Yeah. And yeah. you had the triangle yeah. and the triangle shape and you had the, the, the square shape and you had the hoe shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, the whole, you're the whole circle. Marcel's still working on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the whole hole and you got the wife hole. You're all fucking kerfuffled. <laughs> you're kerfuffling. You're kerfuffling with the hose and then you're wondering why you're upset your whole life.
Bruh. Yeah, your girl is over here posting pictures of herself in her prime, fucking up your prime. Now you can't sell the prime. I recommend for everyone, if you want to have life that you want to have, because every man, every man would like to have a life of, to be, I believe every man want to be rich, right guys? So everyone want to be rich. So we do the work, we do everything, but also you need a woman beside you guys. You need really a woman because, or, or, or you need a family beside you. As I'm saying, your family should be beside you as a, like your mother and like your father. When you have this element, you can perform. But you also need a woman beside you as a wife and try to find a real wife who can push you, who can keep moving with you, you know, don't allow you to stop, you know what I mean? Because you know that you need to perform for her and your kids. Prime, and you're looking fucking crazy in your prime. How about you, know you what I'm saying? Like, enjoy, the, enjoy the experience, enjoy the ride, and wait for the whole facts to show up. Once that shows up, but the whole it, facts. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, these photos yeah. happened like 10 years ago when she was in her prime, by the way. Yeah. Now he's in his prime, trying to sell fucking prime. Oh, and the stock is going down. He's talking about oh, Logan. Funny. Well, he's in his prime. Oh, funny, bro. Like, what the yeah. fuck is going on? Oh, okay, 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 okay. He was talking about Logan Paul because he's marrying to that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. He was talking about Logan. <laughs> On here, bro. And, and the number one thing to look for for all those dudes out there who aren't maybe as experienced as well, the womanizer. What? The number one Walt, thing. Walt, no, that is I'm disgusting. A, Walt, Walt, you misogynistic womanizer. I know you've been with too many girls. So listen. What for the all fuck? of those, for all of those Christian men like me who haven't been with many women, let me give you some advice. So if you've been with as many women as Walt, what you learn, fuck, you learn bro? this. You learn this. The number one thing you need to look for, and I was telling a young man this recently. Is honesty. <laughs> now, now, hear me out. Hear me out. Right. Walt. You get you get the choice of two chicks. Right. You get a choice of two chicks. One of them says, "Hi, my body count is eight, and I used to be a stripper in college." Oh. Cool. All right. Okay. The other one says, "My body count is two, and I've never worked as a stripper." But then you find out her body count counts actually five, and she did work as a stripper for one day. Now you might think the one with the higher body count who worked as a stripper for a longer time is a worse girl. But the other one's worse because everything you find out that means her story was a lie, you could basically times by 100. Her body counts 300. She's been stripping and hooking her entire life. So what you actually want to look for is honesty. When girls come at you, you know, you meet the girl who's like 25. And she's like, oh, my body counts one. You're like, and you know, it, it takes months of investigation to ever believe that kind of story if you have the experience. But if you meet a girl who's 25, goes, oh, my body counts six. I met these guys and they didn't take me seriously. At least, you know, at least she's telling the truth. Telling the truth is the number one thing you want to look for. And it's probably the number one green flag. And the number one red flag is telling is, is lying. Because if you think that you know a girl's body count is three, but then some fourth ex-boyfriend messages you, oh, yeah, I was with her too, and you're like, ah, it's actually four. It's 4,000. <laughs> it is 4,444,444. Because if you think you're looking at the tip of the iceberg, be like, ah, I see the whole picture now, for I was blind, and now I see you are wrong. That's if true. You're That's actually... My body count's 10. You're like, all right, well, you know, fucked up a lot. But at least she's honest to me. That's actually an interesting law of the universe, and you could apply this to nearly anything. It's friends. not just girls, friends, anything. Whatever you catch someone doing, mm -hmm. the odds of catching people doing things is actually very slim. So if you catch someone cheating, or you catch someone lying, or you catch someone being a snake, you have to understand of all the times you didn't catch them. Yeah. Yeah. When you yeah. catch someone do something, that's really, if that's you catch true. a friend say something bad behind your that's back, true. you're like, oh, that's not that bad. No, no, no. Think of all the times you didn't catch it. Think of all the yeah, shit they said. Think of all true. the shit they said that you don't know about. That's the real lesson of all this, yeah. and that's true. Because I, back in my womanizing days, when I used to hang out with Walt more, <laughs> there was this time when I had this side chick. I was kind of dating her, right? And then she discovered I, I, I'm a changed man. She discovered <laughs> that I actually had another girlfriend. She's like, I found your girlfriend, and these two girls started talking. Ah, blah blah blah. We're friends now. <laughs> We're friends. That's disgusting. Both your girlfriends have caught you, and we're friends. And they're messaging my phone, and I'm sitting there with my girlfriend like, these two bitches are crazy. I didn't even, they were, they were neither of them were my girlfriend. Yeah. So they were like, oh, they caught me. They exposed my life having two girls. Oh, yeah, yeah, congratulations. What do you think that was it? I just blocked them both and just me and my girlfriend and lived happily ever after ever since. I'm a changed man. No, I will say Praise this. Praise Jesus. Misogynistic, potentially misogynistic comment coming in. Uh -oh. you, mentioned, you mentioned something about girls lying or whatever. Can they actually really be honest, though? 
Hold on. Dude, let me let me go somewhere with this. Interesting. Uh -oh. Everything about females is a lie. Makeup, heels, waist trainers, dresses to make themselves look slimmer, hair extensions, eyelashes, nails, um, fucking you don't even know when they're on they're ovulating, right? Right? Like it's all hidden. They don't show interest. Everything about them is a lie. You know what I've realized too as well? We do the podcast every night pretty much, and girls always always expose themselves if not by themselves directly somebody chat exposes those girls for doing something behind the scenes and but definitely you're going to find out that they get, they get exposed no matter what so my thing is like just wait your time have the experience enjoy them for the moment but eventually they will expose themselves to you eventually so or or, or and i'll be honest i've met lots of good women in my life or mm -hmm. you meet a girl and i've done this before met a girl eh, whatever she is what she is let me just hook her up with her on weekends and stuff and then she starts buying you gifts, and she's really in love with you, and you fucking, you, you, you're with her months and months and months, and you realize, you know what? There's no red flags, and there's nothing bad about her. So, you know, the, the truth shows itself in the end. Over this time, is true. yeah. Over yeah. time. True. Over, over time, the truth slowly reveals itself. Yeah. But when you uh, rush it, you're fucked. How many hoes you got, Walt? <laughs> I like um, this meme. Yo, yo uh, as a man of God, How man, many girls you got? <sighs> Do all your girls at home watching this now know about the girl you got here now? You know what's funny, bro? I keep getting exposed uh, on the podcast. They do, and they get fucking mad, and they, they block him. Yeah, they, they get, get mad. Because yeah. <laughs> you know what? We saw the dream. That's all the same thing I did yesterday. Should I, should I describe him? <laughs> Yo, chill out, bro. Fuck you. Fuck you. Listen. I'm trying to be a good guy, Because he be lying to these chicks. He be selling them the dream. No, I'm just being uh, nice. What dream do you sell oh. them? Fresh. I get them what tell they want. Tell them what you really what do. What dream do you sell No, Tell them, man. I sell them what they want to hear. That's it. So your lover boy method. No, no, I, no, 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 I'm giving them, officers moving, we got him, we got him, they deserve a man to treat them right, okay, I'm doing that, giving them what they want, what they want to hear, and ultimately they love me, you know, so it's yo. all good, bro, anyhow, there's some more nigga, chats here, yo, they, you got love boy, girl? yo, fresh, you got, we, we're here with the tates and shit, you got to, this nigga be telling bitches he loves them when he does it. <laughs> Yo, Whoa. Yo, that guy. You're a, you're one of that guy. He's a lover boy for real. And, and to think. Yo, he's a lover boy for real. I what called the you fuck? a friend. That guy's about to come in this bitch. What We're done. Fuck, what the fuck, bro? I called Yo. you a friend. Yo. No, but I do, though. Disgust. <laughs> in the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Here, bro. <laughs> Yo, but you know what, you know what who I learned from, though? You know who taught me well? Ooh. Tristan. Me? Oh, no, <laughs> I am shocked and offended. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Jacosta says, shout to Sneeko getting in the ring with MMA champions. Wish you could have been here in Romania with you guys. Nonetheless, good to see legends re reunite in the studio to compete with Myron's uh, speech. Uh, yeah, I saw that cra that clip. That was crazy. I don't I don't know. Thoughts on, on Sneeko? Yeah, that was that was crazy. I, I mean, Sneeko took the licks, but sh what was his name? Sean. Sean was trying Sean. to hurt him. Yeah. I don't know what's That's going on. That's a weird. I I, you know, yeah. don't you just kind of feel like the whole fucking world is weird <laughs> and everyone's fucking weird because let me tell you something that most people don't ponder or contemplate but with my massive monumental global intergalactic cognition it crosses my mind every time i see any form of degeneracy or anything i don't like i don't just think ah people do degenerate things i start to think oh shit degeneracy has now polluted and poisoned our institutions for example hmm. ah okay Dudes watch tranny porn. That's weird. Cool. But the next time I'm in the doctor's office, I'm like, do you watch tranny porn, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you got a white coat on, Mr. Fucking Doctor. Oh, I'm your doctor. And I'm like, yeah, you're driving a Civic. You're not even that rich and shit. You're probably watching tranny porn. Does my judge watch tranny porn? Does the fucking lawyer watch tranny porn? You start, you know what I mean? It starts polluting my brain. So every yeah. time I see anything bad happen in the world, I start looking at all these people. Next time a police officer comes up to me and goes, sir, I'm like, sir, what? You fucking watch tranny porn, G. <laughs> I don't trust anybody anymore. Yo. I don't trust anyone anymore. Am I going yeah. crazy? No, Maybe I'm going crazy. But as the more fucked up the world gets, I just start applying it to all these power structures we're supposed to rely on for fairness and justice and safety and for all of society to function. And then you look at your senators and they stand there and they're watching tranny porn. And you're just like, ah, I'm living in a fucking circus. Nothing makes sense anymore to me. I don't understand. I don't know why Seiko thought he could fight a professional MMA fighter. And I also don't know why Sean decided to take his fucking face off. I don't understand anything 
anymore. <laughs> I don't get it. Circus, I don't get it. Circus World. I don't get it. Uh, Valentizi says, question for Andrew and Tristan. Do you guys follow FNF the whole time? And how have they been holding you guys up uh, while you were down? It needs to be appreciated. I'll talk about this. One, um, yeah, since the day Andrew has first done the FNF podcast, I have been following FNF. Do I watch every single show? No. Do I watch everything they do? No. But have they been my friends since the day I shook their hands in Miami? Yes. So as my friends, mm. I've always supported them in their journey. I'm supporting what they do. Yes. And I do roughly and loosely with my limited free time follow what they do. Two, um, now, you know what this is, Andrew? You know what this is? In fact, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here, if you'll excuse me. Go this ahead. is another COVID-19. Hear me out. So COVID-19 hits, everyone pussies up, wears the masks, shuts the fuck up, takes their vaccines. Afterwards, after the fact, it's, yeah, I knew it was bullshit. Yeah, mask, yeah, vaccines, yeah, I'll never fall for that again. You know what it is? The bravery of people like me and you from day one, nah, COVID's bullshit. Ain't having any of it. And we just fucking flew to Sweden and start fucking bitches and whatever I used to do back then. <laughs> so, but, 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 nowadays, here's the thing. If you don't know me that well and I get arrested for human trafficking, you never know. Next week, they might find a dungeon under my house with 400 women trapped in there. <laughs> that obviously didn't happen, was never going to happen. But, I mean, I've met you four or five times. Like, you didn't know me like that. Yeah. But from day one when I got picked up, same as I've got Ru Russell Brand's back, never met that guy. Yeah. I knew it was bullshit. These guys knew it was bullshit and called it out on day one. Yep. Now a bunch of people will be like, well... They got falsely accused one year and ten months ago, and they keep getting more free, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's bullshit. And you know what? I knew it was bullshit. Shut the fuck up. You, you didn't know. Bullshit. Yeah, no. Nah. These guys, uh, Thierry Baudet, the fucking uh, Netherlands politician who stood up in parliament and said this is bullshit, and a few other dudes from day one called this out as bullshit. Plus, these guys know how many women Andrew gets, so they knew he ain't no human. Though. What do you mean? Hey. <laughs> No, 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 stop the pod. What, what, you, know what, I mean? what are you talking about? I'm just saying, like, now, you don't need to keep well, traffic if you've got a bunch of beautiful women. What I recall... is the womanizer? I know, I well, know. No. But, but, but out wait, of me and you, wait, wait, wait. Walt lies to all his women. What the fuck? <laughs> yo, if you're watching yo, this, Walt yo. lies. If you're one of Walt's girls. He doesn't love you. <laughs> he doesn't love you. He never did. <laughs> and he never will. Yo, who He's are... a human trafficker who is this? and a lover boy. Who is this, bro? Walt is a piece of shit misogynist. <laughs> Aren't you, Walt? Uh, does that girl next door know? Do those girls at home know? Yo, yo, Walt, yo, bro, Walt, send Walt, send Walt to jail. On, jail. Send Walt to jail. Jail. Jail for Walt. Yo. Get a hashtag on Twitter running. Jail for Walt. Hashtag. As a man of God, bro, I don't know what you're, what you're talking about. By the way, I'm You guys don't know I, how much I'm enjoying this. I don't call I can think Andrew. Of one girl right Hold now. On. I don't call in Miami Hold that's on. watching this fuming. I'm yeah, she's sitting there. <laughs> Are they joking? She's texting now. Are they joking? Afterwards, we'll be like, it was just for the show. Listen to me, my love. Listen to me, young lady. What the fuck? I'm not listening. Oh, I'm lonely this winter. I'm fulfilling the wish of the loving being. I don't know. That would hold for me to be alone. I'm lonely this winter. No, you see my chair. Nice Please listen to me. Hey, her name is Brown. I I'm not lying, bro. What the fuck, bro? I'm not lying about. I'm not lying to you about Walt. Bro, this is for you. He's gonna lie to you. He's gonna cheat on you. What the he's fuck? gonna cheat on you tonight after this podcast. That's what he's gonna do. He's gonna text. He's gonna text you. He's gonna say he didn't do it. He's gonna say he didn't mean it. But I promise you, this is a, this is that's a joke. That's what his intention is. This is a joke. He's gonna, he's gonna this. cheat this is a joke. on you. He's gonna cheat on you. This is not true. This is a joke. He's a cheater. What the fuck? You are a cheater, Walter, and it's disgusting. It's terrible. Misogynist. Bro, where you am know. I? Anyhow, you as, as I recall, I this was fucking given fantastic. to the church. I was being a good man of honor. And, you know, I told some flips here and there, but that was about it. No, nigga, you have fun when the girls come on that I've had sex with before on the show. So fuck you. <laughs> I hope you're watching this right now, Brown. <laughs> Everything was do you know, alive. Do you know how you know? Let me, let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you how you know you have good friends. What the fuck, man? Fuck you, friends. Let me tell you, bro. Let me tell you how you know you have good friends. I can tell you why Marcel's been my friend for 20 years, and I can also tell you why these guys are my friends. Because the primary objective of your friends as a man, when you're with them, you should feel like your enemy is harmless. 
Yeah. When you're by yourself, you're worried about what your enemy might do. Whether it's guys on the street who want to stab you, whether it's the government who want to put you in jail, whether it's the tax man trying to take your money. You're worried about what the government or what the guys on the street or what your enemies are going to do. But when you're with your friends, all their bullshit seems harmless. Now, I'm sure when I get dragged back to jail, I'll be thinking, <laughs> why did I believe that Fresh and Fit podcast would save me from this predicament? But at the time, oh, you just think, Fuck it, I'm with the guys. And that's when you're with your real friends. If you find yourself in a group of men and you feel like your enemy can't do anything to you, that's when you have good friends. And that's how you know you're with your friends. And that's why my brother and I like to live with our friends permanently so we stay permanently beyond the reaches of the devils and the demons who are trying to destroy our life because we do nothing but tell the truth about the world. When you are with your guys, your enemy can't do nothing. And the hoes. By, by the way, I, I will say this. Andrew, Tristan, you're telling the truth. I do like the hose. So you do cheat? No, I know. Uh, hold on. Hold on. The guy in the house said, how long is how long going to be? <laughs> <laughs> What's her name, Brown? Can I, can, can I address this? Brown. Properly, please. So It's going down. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> listen. You're going to frown. Okay, look. Yo. This is the honest to God truth. I do like the girls. He's a clown. Only the hose, though. The ones I care about, I don't like to. Anyhow, let's, let's continue. Uh... By the way, that was 500 bucks from Valentizi. Shout out to you, Shout bro. Shout out to you, man. Uh, Diglett says, hell has frozen over. Hell has frozen over. Okay. Let's hope right. so. There's All too right. many of the demons up here on Earth. Literally. Satan. Facts. Demon. You know what? Another thing I'm going to say. going to sound crazy. I don't give a fuck. I've decided. One of the only... Being rich. They say more money, more problems. That is true. But I'm not going to say being rich is bad. Because being rich is obviously fantastic. But one of the best things about being rich is you get to develop these really weird principles that you get to go through with life. Because you don't have to talk to anyone. So guys, make sure to check the store. I will take this off. Oh, they did three hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna do it all. I'm gonna do all this kind of all the reaction from beginning to the end. Because every time this in the middle, basically they are joking. All the whole podcast is uh, they making funny things, but in the same time they saying some stuff in the middle where they're really important and really nice and really good. Though you need, you can work with them in life. So. You can take from uh, take something from them. I don't mean like uh, the sarcastic way or the joke side that they're saying. I still jokes, but you can take some important notes about what they're gonna speak, and they're gonna be in the middle. That's why I'm gonna do it all. So guys, make sure to check the store. I have some cool design there. I just designed them right now, and uh, make sure to purchase something, guys, and to help us uh, give you better quality and better uh, to have better camera anyway. <laughs> Let's go. Anyone you don't want to talk to or associate with anyone you don't want to associate with. And you also, another mass, ama amazing thing about being rich is because if you have status and money, you can save the most important thing in the world, which is time. And let me give you a very quick example. If you're a normal dude and you want to do business with someone, you have to walk in and be like, hey, bro, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And you have to have all the small talk and you have to chat to them and make them like you and try and convince them to do business with you. And you have to waste your time. And time is more valuable than anything. But when you're rich and important, you just sit down and say, yeah, you want to do business? Do this. Boom, boom, boom done. Same with chicks. Dudes have to go on a date with a girl. Oh, I like you. I like you too. It wastes like four fucking hours, hours bro. I ain't got hours. <laughs> Sit down. Yeah, talk to you. Let's go. Boom. I get to save my time. It's fantastic. Another thing that's good about being rich and important is you get to be ridiculously principled. Mm. So you strangely get to make up reasons. Like you can come to me with a business offer for $100 million, but if you're a vegan, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it goes against my principles. So because I'm rich, I get to make up stuff. And I've made up something. I'll and I, I've made this up. I made this up. And I, and I live by it. I have decided that the demons from hell are amongst us. And I have decided that if you're perspicacious enough and pay enough attention, you can see them. Please, call me crazy. Go out in Miami tonight and look around you. And for once in your life, don't look at your fucking screen and don't sit there with fog brain or TikTok mind. Actually pay attention and look at people up and down and start to notice them. Who's this guy? What they wearing? Who's that? Who's this person? What's that? And then you're going to see somebody and you're going to look at them. And you're going to look at the look in their eye and look at the way they're walking. And you're going to say, that's a fucking demon. Mm. That ain't a person. That, that, that's something bad. I've got a bad vibe about that person. Some of them, some of these demons have bright blue hair and they pretend they're a gender they're not. And they're very <laughs> obvious. Some of them are a bit more inconspicuous and you have to work it out. I truly believe they walk amongst us. And I truly believe if you pay attention, you can see them. And I'll tell you something right now. I don't care how slick you're dressed or how fast you talk. If you walk in and I get demon vibes from you, I will look you straight in the face and say, you're a demon. Goodbye, sir. Mm. Done. I believe they're here. 
I believe it. How else can we explain the spiritual war in which we're under, where there are people who are purport and endlessly try and perpetuate lies, which they know are not true, to enslave all of humanity, including our future bloodlines? They're demons. They're demons working for Satan. And someone can come to me and say, Andrew, you made that up. That's crazy. There's no proof there's demons. And I have a study here from the Matrix that says demons aren't real. But, and I'm going to sit and say, I'm a no, fucking demon, demon are real. and you're broke. So how about you get fucked and I'm looking for the demons. You can go through life with TikTok brain. You're not looking out for them. I am. If I'm ever in public and you ever see me and you see me scanning the room, and you're like, why is he looking back and forth? He already has armed security. Why is he looking place to place? I am looking for demons because they exist and they walk amongst us. And I mean that. Right, and right. they transform as well. Right here. Wait, and wait, they wait. take our attention away from what the fuck's really going on. You got Ice Spice dumbass at the Super Bowl with an upside down cross. Who is that? Taylor yeah. Swift. Doing, fucking doing, doing fucking devil hands. Doing devil hands and shit. Meanwhile, hey. what? If you're gonna do, do thousands of people got bombed if, in Gaza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna do devil hands, don't be a three. Yeah. Oh I, I, think, I think would be a, a good rule. Don't be a chubby three. Okay, but no, let's, with ugly hair. But let's go back to like a dirty Q-tip. But, but let's go back to the let's go, spice a dirty three? Q-tip girl. Bro, three. I thought she had much. She, yeah, she's a three. I thought she was a butt. Let's go back to the point I just made, though. <laughs> she's on black, a, bro. On a very serious, serious note, you have someone wearing an upside-down cross making devil symbols at the biggest cultural event in American history. Who yeah. is this? Everything I said about how you can see demons if you pay attention. Did you look at her and think that's a demon? Maybe you didn't. But after listening to this, please pay attention. She is wearing an upside-down cross. The Matrix has made her famous. Nobody knows why. It's certainly not because of fucking talent. I think she's and wearing she's, Balenciaga, too. And she's wearing Balenciaga, which we know. Child molesters. Which are child molesters. Molestiaga. Yeah. And she's making devil symbols. What more, what kind of clue are you looking for if those aren't the clues you need? Let what, me, what do you want her to do next? Let me more project. Grow no, horns? Sorry. As a, as a Christian, I know you're Muslim. As a Christian, I need 20 seconds to interject. An upside down cross is not actually a, deme a demonic symbol, just like a rainbow is not actually a sign of LGBTQ. An upside down cross used to be a very good Christian symbol. It's called the cross of St. Peter, because when St. Peter was ordered to be executed via crucifixion, he told the centurions executing him, I refuse to die the same way of, as Christ. I am not worthy. And they crucified St. Peter on an upside down cross. And it's called the cross of St. Peter. And it used to be a good Christian symbol. Like the rainbow used to be a good Christian symbol. I'm not saying I spice is a good Christian because he's clearly using it in the demonic way. But I will jump in there for half a second to defend the cross of St. Peter because there are some good Christians who use that symbol. Of course. Okay. But, okay. Let me ask you a question. Then. Well, you guys don't know. Tristan, Tristan, it Tristan wasn't Tristan. I spice. I don't defend no, no, it. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, please, please. Tristan is the historian. What is the probability? The Ice Spice <laughs> knows Zero. about St. Peter's crucifixion. Or, or is she wearing that shit to say, I'm a demon, everyone, but no one's paying attention because you're too busy with your TikTok you are, brain. You so look, devil symbols, demon sign, look at me. And I guarantee no one came up to her at the Super Bowl no. once and said, you're a demon. I would have. <laughs> I would have. I don't want a picture. I want to. You are demonic. Right, and Andrew, goodbye. And Andrew, nobody, goodbye. Also, also, history buff. Nobody came up to her at the, at the Super Bowl and said, "Thanks for representing the struggle of St. Peter." Either. So, yeah, yeah. I just, I just like you know, like the rainbow that corrupted. I just do want to put that out there because there are churches in Romania with upside down crosses that have been stopped, but that's not. Satanic. Like, yeah. Well, I, I didn't learn something. Certainly is. So. Start paying attention. Start looking for the demons. You're going to see them. You and will. Everyone's going to call me crazy, but when you start looking, you're going to remember what I just said and you're going to start to see them. And once you start to see them, your entire view of the world will change. And then what changes by extension are statistics and demographics. And next time they say, get on this bus. You know what I think? I don't get on the bus. I'm not broke. But for example, someone to say to me, get on the bus, <laughs> a few things would cross my mind. Firstly is, do I have a VIP seat? Secondly, is anyone going to talk to me because I don't want to talk to anyone? And thirdly, I think there's 40 people on that bus. There's at least two demons on that bus. So when I get on the bus and I'm walking through the aisles, I'm scanning who are the demons who the as soon as you're in crowds this is something i don't like going out i don't like going to crowds really i don't like being around public people i don't like being in really public places if i do i have armed guards it's very <laughs> private it's not just because of security if i go to a place where there's hundreds of people demons are in there mm. they're in they're amongst us bro that's true I, if i don't know you and and there's a couple of you maybe you're cool but if i don't know you and there's a group of you there's demons. And anyone who sits and thinks I'm crazy, that's fine. I guarantee you, you take 100 random people from the street and you put them in any scenario. And that doesn't have to be an extreme scenario. It can be the scenario of a bit of PTSD. It can be the scenario of they need to eat and there's some hunger going on. It can be the scenario of you having gold in your hand and they want that gold. You will see people become demons pretty fucking fast.
You'll see it. You get 100 random people on the street, you walk amongst them with the wrong watch on, and you'll see a demon. Because he'll take your fucking life for a piece of metal. You'll see it, bruv. Yeah. You'll see it. They're out there. And I mean, hell, right now, it's Valentine's Day, right, back in the States. And there's people right now that literally are trying to give roses or fucking course some chick that's a fucking demon, and they don't even fucking know it. Oh, like, there you a, go. She's a semen demon or whatever kind of demon you guys want to fucking say. You guys over here white nighty for these girls trying to give her a fucking rose, when in reality, she, that rose will die in two days with that, that bitch, man. She's yeah. fucking... London's crazy, though. They're, they're the worst ones. Set up yeah. chicks oh. in London. Bro, oh, set up chicks, yeah. we can talk about that all day. You could tell... I tell mean, the audience what a set up chick is. Yeah. What they do is they'll like go and find someone on Instagram, like court them and that, like they like them, get them to meet them, and then like ring their boys and say, all right, we're here, blah blah. And uh -huh. like, rush it, take all his stuff, or they'll Done. drug him first, or they'll rush him. That happened in uh, Luton. One guy got uh, drugged, and then he must have woke up and they stabbed him. He died. I remember. Wow. I remember. Yeah, I remember. That was like a few years ago. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. It happens in Miami all the time too. Yeah, yeah. Demons, they just bro. don't go to the police because they're embarrassed because the girl like drugs them and then steals all his shit. And he's like, damn, I don't want to go to the cops. I got got. Colombia happens a lot too. Like, yeah, man, there's like some really like scum. Like, and the thing is, like, so many guys are like willing to commit to these fucking girls yeah. that are terrible people, and you guys want to go ahead and make them your Valentine. It's not just commit. You? you know what the crazy thing about it? It's, it's not just commit. It's the thirst because the average man, the average man is afraid to risk his life in near any any regard. He's afraid to say what he thinks because he doesn't want to lose his job, which affects his life. And he's afraid to have a controversial opinion. And he's a, if his boy was under attack, he'd be afraid to fight because he doesn't want to die. And he's afraid to do all these things. He lives in fear. But he risks his life for basic pussy any chance he gets. Damn. Any chance he gets, he'll risk his life for pussy. He'll end up running around with some girl he barely knows. Welcome back to your place. She's putting on Instagram their location the entire time. Yeah. Miles for it. Miles yeah. in a city he doesn't Not know. Bro, and you Not are, even know the language. I know only bro, that's that's even worse. He took out my took out my mouth. Columbia. There, there's dudes so fucking desperate, they're gonna go to South America. Passport bros. Where they chop your head off with chainsaws. Not all by the way, not all. Fall in love with a six in the club. <laughs> and walk, and follow her to the favela. Oh to, shit. I might get a blowjob. Like, bro, you're risking your life. What are you risking your life for? Doesn't that show the absolute highest level of thirst? It it's does. insane. The yeah. average man, if you were to sit, find the average man on the street and say, let's analyze with the power of the Lord above and look at your entire life you've ever done. And let's look at the last what? 10 times you've risked your life. I guarantee it's for pussy. Yeah. And I guarantee it ain't even good pussy. I guarantee it's used pussy, <laughs> basic pussy on a five. And he's risking his life for that shit. You need to start paying more attention to get I'm, your priorities. I'm going to go into this a little bit because actually me and Myron, with, uh, they, you, these guys have been here for a few hours and, and mm. they were at the house and me and Myron were talking and um, we had a conversation about Ukraine and uh, Myron was saying, yeah, guys keep saying to me, come to Kiev. There's no men here. It's all girls. Well, one second, one second, one second. <laughs> Eastern European pussy is good. Eastern European women are beautiful. You want to go to a fucking war zone for the chance of getting some pussy. Damn. And I looked at my and I said, Myron, would you go to Kiev? He just shook his head at me. I go into a war zone for pussy. Well, for two reasons. One. One, because there's no pussy worth risking your life for. And two, I genuinely believe it's evil. Now, everyone knows my views on the Ukraine-Russian conflict. And everyone knows that I don't think Ukraine are saints. And I think that, you know, Russia was forced to act. Everyone knows my perspective. However, the young, brave men of Ukraine are good guys who think they're doing the right thing, who are dying in droves because foreign interests have funded this fucking war. They're being sent to their fucking deaths. Now, if I was in Ukraine, if I was in Kiev, and for some reason, let's say I had an injury and I was not drafted into the conflict, and my brother and my cousin and my father and my uncle and my friends had died in this fucking war that the Americans fucking did their little magic to make happen, and I saw some fucking American in a club in Kiev, go, hey, man, hey, Myron, come over here. Yeah. It's all girls. I slit his fucking throat. <laughs> and and you, you're going over there. You're going over there to a high testosterone, envir a testosterone environment because Ukrainian men are not pussies and Ukrainian men are not cowards. And what, to get some pussy? Oh, I'm lonely this winter. I'm fulfilling the wish of Some sex, you right. should be ashamed of yourself. 
crazy. You should be ashamed of yourself because what you're doing is you are being a vulture. You're being a vulture on the suffering of others so you can get your little fucking pee pee wet. <laughs> I hope something bad happens to you if you're going there for pussy right now. I really do. Stay the fuck out of Ukraine. Getting girls can't be this hard. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it is yeah. for some people, man. It's, it's the white people, bro. <laughs> <laughs> As the whitest man here, I'm offended. I'm going to be racist against white people because for some reason that's allowed. It is allowed. It's it allowed. Is allowed. So we're racist against white people. You may proceed. Oh, yeah. Walt's so black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so black. This... That's why you all the hosts. Yes, he meant. Hey, he has gone. <laughs> he's got, oh, maybe he's misproduced. Let, let, me, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. Because hey. we, And this is probably going to end up being played against me in court. But fucking wham. What is it? <laughs> Who cares? If I say imagine a school shooter in your mind, what color are they? White. Right. Now, the boy, the men who go there and they're shooting up schools and saying, do you like me now, bitch? Da -da -da. Are they getting laid? No. no. Okay. If I say imagine a pedophile, you're going to imagine an old, fat, white dude. True or false? True. True. White. Because, because he ain't getting no pussy. True. Now, Winston, my G, from the island. Bomba. <laughs> he's got no car. He's got no money. But he has game. He ain't got a place to live. He's 52. His girlfriend's 28. Don't know how he did it. She ain't even ugly. She's all right. Winston has no need to go on childporn.com. It's the white boys doing that shit. True or false? True. I, I'm telling you. I, they, there's, there's, they ain't got the melanin. Something's lacking. And they end up they end up down there in Columbia. You know, it's great down here. The girls are great down here. Bro, you got $6, you idiot. You're talking about being a fucking G, being a pimp, you dummy. And I wonder you're going to get drugged and fucking robbed. Yeah. Bro. You know what's funny? Girls in foreign countries, bro, it's funny because guys go over there to get better girls, right? The problem is they're not better guys. But as a result, those girls see them as a mark, take advantage of them. And they, they still get finesse. So my thing is like, you gotta be the man I didn't want to be around anyway. Uh, Joaquin Clay says, shout out to FNF and the Tates, saving lives out here. Keep changing the world, uh, top G's. Shout out to you, bro. We have here as well, uh, again, Diglett says, fresh is a man of God on God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Fresh, you, you ain't getting out of this. Jackson Brown, don't listen to this. Uh, you yeah, no, no. said that yourself. You've been on no. your phone, Walt. <laughs> Are you sending super chat? I am not. You're spending your own I money am not. to yourself to Aikido away the truth. <laughs> Brown, because I'm, I'm on to you. What the fuck, nigga? Because, because I'm actually a man of God, I will put you on a private plane <laughs> overnight from Miami here so you can catch him red-handed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll film it for Rumble. God. If you yeah. want it, if you want it, reach out to Myron. You get a private jet. He'll be asleep with his chick. He'll be flying bro. through the sky, Listen. eating caviar. I'm and when he wakes up in the morning, hi guys, I'm Walt. Boom, boom. He's gonna have to see your face, <laughs> and I'm gonna film it all, and we're gonna release I, it on Rumble. I'm here for work. The okay? offer is open, and then you can throw the caviar on him. I'm here to work. I'm here to work. Yeah, you're working. Uh, you're working. It'll match your skin. I want to talk a little bit. Uh, now you're on the subject of white people. I want to talk a little bit about Ted. <laughs> Okay. 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 I'm, just, I'm, no, I'm just saying, I said you know Monday. what? You know what? We know we because me and me and me and uh, me and Myron had this discussion earlier. I don't want to say little son about Ted Bundy because Andrew, what did you say? Imagine a school shooter. What does he look like? Imagine a child molester. What does he look like? Imagine a sexual predator. What does he look like? You know why I hate Ted Bundy? I'm sure there are some Ted Bundy fans watching this who love Who's Ted Bundy. Ted I don't Bundy. personally. Who's I Ted Bundy, Ted guys? Bundy. You know why I hate Ted Bundy? <laughs> Hear me out. Because he was handsome. <laughs> Now, you think I'm crazy. I'll tell you why I'm not crazy. Because exceptions don't disprove the rule. We all know what child molester looks like. Go to Google right now and type human trafficker, sexual predator. Go to images. Look at them. They don't They're look fat. like me. I hate <laughs> Ted Bundy because every time I say, women adore me. Women adore me. Women love me. I'm six foot four. I'm 220. I'm 242 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm a billionaire. I'm rich. I'm dressed well. I'm charming. Of course I don't have to kidnap women. I was like, but Ted Bundy, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. The one handsome man to murder and strangle women. <laughs> He fucked it up for all the rest of the handsome dudes. Because when you get falsely accused, they fucking throw the Ted Bundy card at you. Damn. Let me tell you something. Myron, thank you, my brother, for bringing up the most valid point ever. He may have been handsome. He may have been charming. But he drove a shitty ass car and he was <laughs> broke! I'm nothing like Ted Bundy! Nothing like him! I ain't gonna traffic anyone! 
because I'm way too fucking rich. There you Forget go. that. Now throw that back in my face. I'm going to use Epstein. Shut the fuck up. He was ugly. Ain't no rich and handsome man ever committing sexual crimes against women because we don't have to. Thank you. Yeah, we, we, we were formulating that <laughs> on the right over here. Bro, we're going to jail. We're going to jail. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're fucking Brought done. to you by Rumble. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to you all these, man. That's why I couldn't have this on YouTube, guys. DG Bill says, I think they can. taste, W Fresh and Fit. I appreciate the value as a whole. First time watching the team together, fucking W. Shout out to you, bro. Uh, we have here as well, Jacob says, uh, I'm looking to add on to my site also. I do time stamps for Fresh and Fit. I want to know if I can do time stamps for any other you guys here. Andrew, Andrew Tristan, Shelton Myron's fitness plan. Uh, so who wants to work for you guys, I guess, uh, offline? Everyone wants to work for me. Time stamps. Okay. I'll fill them out in your services after. Cool. I got you, because you do good for us. That's it for now. Um, no, uh, the whole Ted Bundy thing is hilarious, yeah, because, like, you know, people always want to use, like, the crazy, crazy exception to the rule. But, yeah, Ted Bundy didn't go to the gym, and he was a brokey. True. So there you go. True. You guys can't use that argument anymore. Yeah. Boom. Don't ever say Ted Bundy to me again. They always like to use so fucking Ted Bundy. So how do we save the West, man? How do we save oh, shit. the current climate of We talked about this men. a little bit earlier. How do we save the guys watching right now? to get girls, money, status, cars, everything. I haven't seen no fat girls in Romania yet. That's You've true. been here for almost That's two days now. Right sure. Like a little, over, a little over 24 hours. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's a very interesting question, Walt. And it's a very detailed and nuanced answer in the large tapestry in which society is constructed from. But I think that if we save ourselves on an individual level, that's one of the best things about being a good person, whether you're male or female. If you're genuinely a good person who does the right things, the people around you will benefit from it. And if there's enough good people, society will be saved. And I'm talking about good men and good women. If a good woman is a good woman, she feeds people, she makes people happy, she makes people feel nurtured, she can cure somebody when they're feeling sick, she makes them feel better. A good woman makes her man feel braver, she inspires him, she makes him want to work hard. Good women are extremely powerful forces of nature, as yeah, are good men. And I think the first thing you need to do is... Yeah, exactly, that's what I was saying earlier. When you have really good women be behind you or beside you, is you can, you, you're going to perform, guys. They are really a force, like, they can keep pushing you. and. Some of, if you have a bad girl, then she can block you guys. That's that's what I'm was go was I was saying earlier. You need a, a good woman in your life, guys. Well, I hope. Uh, well, I hope we can um, share it on YouTube anyway. I I, I don't want to get the video blocked. I hope we can be able to share it on YouTube with you guys. And you can give me a feedbacks about what you thought about this video and what you think about it and how to think. But most of it is just as you can see and. Don't let your emotion involve with the, the video what he's saying. Just think like you're in when you go to a comedy show and you see like this is basically funny things that he's saying. But in the same time, there is in the middle really good uh, points. So don't take everything personal, guys. Be the best version of yourself. And if enough people do that then society will be fixed. And the good woman is going to marry the good man and raise six good kids, which means the next generation, there's more hope for everybody else. There's more hope for good men and good women out there in the world. Yeah, you can't change anything on a macro level at our level. I don't even think at the political level and at the presidential level, you could change things on a macro level in terms of societal change. What I do know is I have fans of mine and you have fans of yours who are fitter, stronger, smarter, well-read, more charming, better behaved, more God-fearing than they were when they first encountered us. Not Ted and Bundy. And that's all we can do. I can... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not Ted Bundy's. Except him. <laughs> I'm not Ted Bundy. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> no. I'll fucking lose it. Strangle and kill him. <laughs> no, but... Mask slipped. <laughs> put together audiences, right, of other creators and our audience. We do meetups all the time. Yeah. You know, you do War Room. We do, for example, uh, CEO Network meetups and Fresh Fit meetups. Our audience looks more fit, more level-headed, more well-dressed, and they all come from a background of like struggle or poor. But at the same time, they're watching us to get inspired and do better. I think as guys, as, as an example, we're doing pretty good. That's what I would say. Yeah, I, I, I think men have a, a natural, innate, masculine instinct to protect and to provide. Yep. If you're a man who has this stuff in order, you naturally want to protect those you care about. 
and you naturally want to provide for them, you have no problem paying their bills and taking care of them. A good man has no problem paying the bills for his woman and paying the bills for his kids and making sure they're safe. That's what a man wants to do when he has his things in order. If you're the kind of man who doesn't feel that way innately, there's something wrong with you. And there's probably 50-50 is unacceptable, guys. Yeah, and there's yeah. probably something wrong with you because you're not being the best version of yourself. And it's amazing how easily you'll do the things you're supposed to do when you're the man you're supposed to be. And if you focus on making sure you're as strong and rich and smart and hardworking and intelligent as possible, and if you're careful with the company you keep, both male and female, and you have friends like we have here at this desk, fresh and fit are some of my newest and best friends. Marcel's one of the, well, I've known you 20 years, 25. and you've never beat me at Tekken. And, <laughs> and, the, and, the point I'm, and the point I'm making <laughs> is that, What character do you use? Law, bro. Oh, shit. Bro, okay. law. I laid down he the, is law. the law. I am the law. Oh, Andrew, can we be honest here? You lost to me earlier at a game. You just fucked me up a And I can't no not say this on camera. He smoked me. I had no, no idea. He what? smoked Marcel, me. Marcel, come on, bro. You were there. I wasn't. No, I missed it. Oh, you did? No, I said well, I destroyed him. Yeah, we'll have to do it again. We need a rematch. Yeah. But listen, bro. He plays he, match he's a pretty good player. I, I, I will say that. But yeah, continue. No, but if you're the best version of yourself, you're naturally going to do the right things. It's amazing what God has instilled inside of us. And if you're hanging around with the right people, that's what's so important about masculine networks. I know... Uh, even in the mornings when I don't feel like training, I wake up and I really can't be bothered because I train seven days a week. I've been aching for a year and a half and I don't want to train. But if I can say to Marcel, let's go train. He, even if he doesn't want to train, is going to go, all right, because we're both stubborn. <laughs> and, then, and then from there, we're going to get it done. So if you're, if you're the good person around the right people, you're going to end up affecting everyone around you. You can't go through the world without leaving a ripple, a ripple effect. And that's why you have to be your best version of yourself. And that ripple effect is going to be vast and it's going to be continuous into space time. And you don't know how the butterfly effect works. You don't know about you being a nice, courteous person, holding that door open that one time, how that can affect someone's life in such a positive way or smiling at someone when they do something nice to you or helping someone who needs help. You can be a genuinely good person, but to do that, you need to be a man of capability. And you need to understand that the whole world can be fixed if men and people get their act in order. And I truly believe that all of this falls on men we sit here and we joke and we make fun of women and all these jokes because it's locker room talk and it's funny but i actually believe that men are meant to lead and women in general in general as a general rule when they find a man they respect they follow him and i know that because if you meet a good woman and she loves you all of a sudden she likes the music you like yep she likes the cars you like she believes the politics you Sports. believe she watches the shows you watch so if we have such a problem with women she plays the game you play all of it so we have such a problem in the world <laughs> this is i don't think in an old video but i think they are this, this kind of words i heard them before i think they are well usually they they say the same thing with a little bit difference well, today there's gonna that's down to a huge lack of masculine role models and a huge lack of men doing their job because as much as we laugh and clown on women etc if you're a man who has his stuff in order you're going to find a woman who's loyal to you you're going to find a woman who at least keeps her legs closed. At least you're going to find it. it. And they do exist. It's all about taking accountability as a person, blaming yourself for absolutely everything so that you have power over the situation because you have no power if you blame the world. If you blame women for everything, you have no control. Yeah. If you blame yourself, you have control over the situation. And I think that if men get their act together, you'll be surprised how that will expand out towards society and how not only your life gets better, but the life of everyone you care about, everyone you meet, everyone you interact with, their lives get better by extension. And that's what we need to fix society. There, there, and, oh, and, go and ahead, yeah, Tristan. No, sorry, I was going to say, and, and if a man like Myron makes his little ripples in the lake and Andrew makes his little ripples in the lake and, and yeah and 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 uh marcel and walt and me and everyone makes their little ripples in the lake and every single person who picks up on those ripples makes his own little splash it could spread like a virus mm. you'd be surprised how fast things could spread how much one celebrity or one famous person or one influential person can change the world it's happened millions of times over human history we can all name hundreds of influential people whose little single splash of a single act of resistance, Rosa Parks, for example, mm -hmm. can lead to a splash and a ripple in other people, in other people, in other people that can change a nation, that can change a country, that can change the fucking world. So, yeah, we make our stupid jokes. Yeah, it's locker room talk. Yeah, we yeah. like to make fun. That's yeah, what I said. Some of the things that we say. That's yeah. what I said earlier. I believe every man get this kind of conversation behind closed door. You know, you are driving in a car or you're going to trip or you're going, you are with your friend playing, like going to play football and you're in the locker room. Uh, locker room. So you speak these kind of things. They're they just jokes. It's, some of them sarcastic, some of them jokes. So don't take anything personal, guys. Don't focus on things like this. Focus only on an important uh, point that they're making.
can be can and will be used against us in a court of law. Yeah. Yeah, we know this. Yes. However, we know our fans are getting an overwhelmingly positive message from what we say and be your own little spark be your own little ripple in that lake as well sorry that's what i said no, earlier no, no no uh and that, that adds even more because i was gonna say uh, i was gonna actually ask you the question remember you tweeted earlier today that clip where this woman this fat woman goes in and says if you make 50k per year you shouldn't be dating yes right now and i want to say this because a lot of guys like looked at that and they're like this is fucked up this bullshit blah blah well she's half right and i'll explain what i mean by that yeah if you want to get a woman to submit to you, fucking make you coffee. Like, for example, right? One of, I'll just say a lady here, right? Who may or may not be with one of the men here at the table is making coffee on demand and getting drinks, etc., and doing, you know, things behind the scenes. And <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't live here. God right. damn. If you freaking... want to be able to get, like, the type of woman that a lot of you guys are watching the show want, a girl that's going to listen to you, not give you a headache, be by your side, not embarrass you, not fucking be sucking dick at her prime, and next thing you know, you're trying to sell prime, figuring out why you're, you're, you look crazy or whatever the fuck. <laughs> you need to be a guy that has a shit together financially, mindset-wise, etc. Now, even though she's wrong in the aspect that Making 50k per year doesn't disqualify you from dating. What it does disqualify you from is getting a certain level of respect for women to get the ultimate submission, right? So she's half right. You can go ahead and date making 50k per year, but understand that you're not going to get a fucking hot girl that's going to follow your lead and respect you a lot of the times when you make that kind of money. And that's just an unfortunate reality of women, man. They're hypergamous. If you want to get the hottest girls that are going to listen to you, not give you a fucking headache, stay low, etc., you got to be the best version of yourself. And a lot of times that comes down to making more money, man. Guys, you should not be happy making 50K per year, period. Yeah. You should be striving to make more than that. There's kids in the real world right now, 16 years old, making that a fucking month. Yep. True. Yeah. Just to let you guys know, there's guys in the real world right now, 16 years old and still fucking high school doing fucking geometry making that money a fucking month and you're telling me that you guys can't do it and, and you know what let me tell you though about that video clip if i were to watch that on and she's ugly too yeah if I, that's no, a crazy part no, she's ugly what? for saying this here's why Jail. she's right and you're right about her being right here man let's close our eyes and let's forget the grotesque beast of a woman that was saying that thing <laughs> If the exact same. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Made, I know. The, fat, say, uh, the fat woman. 10 out of 10, super Okay, okay, okay. From, yeah. The weird. Macedonia, but, who was a virgin. Was like they said. Well, guys, you know, courting girls costs money. If you only make 50k a year. 50,000 is know, not enough. We, we, you like, are to, broke. we like to go on dates. <laughs> you know, you'd be like, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. This fat, ugly, grotesque bitch can't be demanding anything from any man, so it makes the clip stupid. Yeah. That thing. Oh, 50k ain't enough for me because i make 50k even though she's ugly as fuck they'll look at it like well you make as much as me so therefore you don't qualify for me which is you know it's retarded that women nah, think that way it's not they think if they make as much money as you that you know oh uh, uh, even though i'm ugly as shit, i deserve more sorry i'll blame men right now you know whose fault that is that clip reminds me of a clip i saw about three or four years ago of some grotesque <laughs> southern United States, I think she was maybe mixed race or something. This beast of a woman was talking about God made, God tried hard when he made me because my curves, every oh, inch of me is sacred. I didn't see and, this and I was like, where does she get this confidence from? You know where she and that other fat bitch gets that confidence from? Someone's fucking her. Yeah. yeah. Someone. Yeah. It's yeah. your fault, men. <laughs> it's all your fault. If all of you had the same standards as me, these girls would be sitting there being like, being a fat, grotesque bitch doesn't work. Men aren't going to pay you attention. You got off your game. The fact that her inbox is somehow full and her bed has one of you motherfuckers in it every single day is where she gets the whole men want me and my every inch of my curves is beautiful bullshit from. I it's mean, it's your fault. We know a guy that's true, actually. That gets mm. Destroyer, and uh, that's possible. Anything's possible. Yeah, the, the world's crazy. And I, I think there's another way you can look at this. You can look at this in a more universal context it's not even just about women and dating but i think a lot of people get offended by that clip because they think okay yeah her standards are unrealistic for who she is as a woman and yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. that's fine but if we look at it in a more universal and as a more meta point i love that the world is hyper competitive and when you're extremely successful you do i love the fact that women only want to date men with lots of money because i have lots of money and I love the fact that men want to date that women want to date men with good bodies who are strong because I'm strong. It's fantastic. I would actually be devastated if women changed their minds because I like it being.
competitive because I like to win and I have no problem with the competition. I have no problem with war. If you're going to sit and go, women shouldn't think this way. What you're actually doing, and you may not realize you're doing this, but you're speaking to the universe and saying, I can't win. So I want to change the, the rules of the game. Good and point. I think you should apply a completely different mindset. If women sit there and say, I want this, 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 and this, I am never offended by that because I sit there and go, yep. I uh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Text me then. I'm winning. So I'm winning. So I think you should look at these things as a man. How can you, as a man, take absolute self accountability? Yep. You can blame her and you can blame women. We can blame society. All those things. That's true. But the best thing you can do is sit there and go, well, let me make sure I don't fall into any category where I can be disqualified. Yep. And then you don't have to worry about any of these things. And the best thing about being a man, in fact, the only good thing about being a man, because being a man is much harder than being a woman. You're born, nice. you're born with no value. You don't matter. Your life is hard. The only good thing about being a man is that it's a harder version of the game of life. It's a more difficult version of consciousness. And if you play a harder video game, you get a higher score. If you're a top tier male, it's the best possible experience. You, there are dudes out there who are jealous of chicks because chicks get attention. Because they're like, oh, those girls get to go here. These girls get to go there. But if you were at our level getting to do it as a man, not as a chick, as a man. It's better. It's much better. It's always going to be better. Yeah. So we have the best possible chance to live the best possible life. All you have to do is be man enough to get your stuff in order. And, and, and this is something that's really true about the world. And I say this all the time. People often say it's okay to fail if you try your best. But I will argue if you try your best, you will never fail. I heard this you before. I think best, it's an old video, you right? You will not actually fail. If you get up every day and do what you're supposed to do. I've never seen a person get up every day, eat right, hit the gym twice a day, every day, eat properly, sleep as much as they're supposed to, their supplements are in order, doing their absolute best, who was not in good shape. I've never seen it. It's literally physically impossible. Yeah. <laughs> so you either want it or you don't. And it's the same with absolutely everything else. A lot of people go, I've been trying. If you were really trying for the amount of time you've said you've been trying, you wouldn't still be in the position you're in. And that's the truth. Does it also work the other way around though? Like the girl who's saying you have to have 50K, it's like, what do I get for my 50K? Because these girls don't have the standards that we want as men also. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yes, they're it does. Them. They're not looking after the kids. They're, they don't want to be traditional women. You're saying yeah. you have to have 50K. You're not even a traditional woman. How dare you say it? Yeah. So mm. and, and, it, and it comes like, and this is why I tell guys like, you just have to be, yeah. th th this is why I tell, I tell guys so much like, yo, it's not okay to be average anymore. It really isn't, dude. Like, I talked about this in my book, Why Women Deserve Less. Actually, I released it last year. It's one year anniversary. I released it on Valentine's Day. Why Women Deserve Less. <laughs> so, <laughs> very romantic, my wrong. Great book Thank for you. her to read. Uh, but, read you know, it. get up a copy for your girl. But I say this, uh, you know, all jokes aside, um, women can make their own money gun now, guys. So what's left? If women make all their money and they're able to get their own resources, what's left? They want the guy that has way more resources and is a lot better than them. The days of them getting with an average guy are done, bro. So if you want a girl that's going to cook and clean for you and be submissive and give you sex on command and not give you a headache, etc., etc., you got to be that fucking guy, man. You can't be a regular Joe Schmo anymore and think life's still going to be great. No, it's going to fucking suck. You can end up playing video games a lot of times by yourself, whacking off to porn, etc. It's not good enough to be average, guys. You have to be top tier guy. And and I've said this too. A lot of guys complain about feminism, whatever. What feminism did do, and inadvertently to the feminists that don't realize it, right? It's given all the power and leverage to the top guys. They don't know this, but all the women are top fighting for the top guys. So you can use this tool of feminism and sexual openness, all this other bullshit that these women have against them if you're that top guy. Because they don't know that they inadvertently gave the power to the top dudes, man, because now they could pick the, ch the women that they want. And here's the other reason why it's important for you to have money and have status and have you get in g the gym, etc. You can go ahead and tell bitches no. You know how powerful that is? You don't have to go to the favela. You don't have to go to fucking Kiev yep. when you can say no. <laughs> you know yep. how powerful that is? Some of you guys have never told a girl no in your fucking life. You, you might be sitting next to a bitch right now. Watching this show. I don't think I'm going to finish it all, guys. Well, at least if I finish it, I'm going to finish it uh, without a reaction. Because it's too long, guys. Uh, it's probably going to be boring a little bit for you guys, so... Anyway, make sure to check the store, guys. Uh, I dropped uh, some nice design uh, guys there, so ch make sure to check it and purchase something from there, guys. Make sure to purchase something from there. If you want to support us, make sure to, su to check something from there, guys.
and um, we're gonna drop this one hour 20 minutes as a first part and the second part i'm gonna do it later not now i have stuff to do so i cannot uh, keep moving with it uh, right now so i hope you enjoyed guys and see you for next reaction guys and peace enjoy